Hey y'all, I'm Chris, and this is your 2022 Airstream Base Camp 20X. We'll start right here with the propane cover this time. Under here, we're gonna find two 20 pound propane bottles. In between your propane bottles, you do have an automatic regulator. This regulator is designed so that you can run both bottles open, and when one runs empty, it'll automatically switch over to the other bottle internally. This is just a little storage compartment, and this is the manual crank for the stabilizer jacks. Remember, the Base Camp 20X has stabilizer jacks at all four corners. It does have solar guards, just like the regular trailers. The windows that are behind there do not open, so the only good reason you've got to ever open the solar guards along the front of this trailer is just to clean the window that's behind it on the outside. Remember, the screws that hold it shut have T-shapes, so you just give them a quarter turn. They both come out of the channels. This side's gonna hinge away, and the two that are over here are gonna hinge this direction. Come around the corner here, Brian. Now this unit has onboard solar panels and it has lithium batteries. There is a port for an external solar plug right here. Next to that, we've got the gross vehicle weight and tire pressure sticker. This is gonna be an 80 PSI tire and you wanna maintain that pressure for best towing and also best tire wear. Camp power is gonna come in here. It's a 30 amp service on this unit, 120 volts. This is the shore cord, it's 25 feet long. It's gonna get rolled up, it's gonna go home with you. Below that, you're gonna find a wet storage compartment. And there are foam gaskets around the edges of these, but water will get past that. So don't put anything in this one that you're worried about getting wet. Waste clean out right here. There is a light, just in case you've got to connect at night. Forward, you will find the storage tube for your sewer hose. Those tubes hold 15 foot collapsible hoses. And remember the base camp 20X is gonna have a gray tank and a black tank, not the combination waste tank. So just like on the regular trailers, you always begin with the black tank, fill it full through the waste clean out. The 20X does have a waste clean out like the regular trailers. Wash it out. So you're gonna fill an empty two or three times until it's clean. Close it and let a little water back into it. So you've got some, some water in there for your chemical. Throw the chemical into the toilet, come outside and do the gray tank second. Never open both valves at the same time. If you do, the black will flow into the gray tank and you can't leave your valves open at your camping site. Back here, you have the exhaust for the furnace. These furnaces are susceptible to mud daubers. This is the same furnace that comes in the interstate vans. And just like those vans, we've got little screens that you can cover these little vent ports with that'll keep those bugs out of there. The 20X has a waste clean out valve, and that's this port right here next to the furnace, between the furnace and the, and the fresh water fill. So when you attach the water hose to this port, it's gonna put water directly into the black waste tank. It's designed to have you flush that one out. Fresh water's filled here. Just like you're used to, it's a gravity port. Stick your water hose in there and fill it up. Below that is the city water connection. Remember, the Airstreams have built-in city water connections, so there's no need to add, I'm sorry, built-in pressure regulators on their city water connections, so there's no need to add an external pressure regulator on an Airstream. This is gonna be the exhaust for the water heater. It's an on-demand water heater, and it is propane fired. Next to that, we've got your outside shower. So you can hose yourself off out here before you track that motor mess inside. We'll come around the back here. On the rear door, there's a little hook here. This door is designed to be rested against this hook. Just like so. You don't want it setting on the hinges themselves. Again, you wanna make sure you don't just go slamming the door. If that hook is attached and you slam the door too hard, you might yank that out of the door there. Coming around the corner here, Brian. You've got your nightshade. This is a bit of a white board, so you can leave your, your friends little notes. And then there is a bug shield that's gonna drop down here and cover this rear port. And below we've got another wet storage compartment. This one will not drain, and it has a 50 pound weight limit. Against the side of here, you've got one of two vents for your furnace. This is gonna be just your standard AC port, only works when you're plugged into the shore service. This trailer does not come with an inverter and then 12 volt charging next to that. Outside, you've got an external AC port, just your standard 15 amp, again, no inverter on this trailer. So this one's only powered when you're actually plugged into the shore service. One little quirk about base camp doors is that they don't just open readily. I'm pulling on that pretty good. You can see the trailer shaking. 
When you go to open a base camp door, you need to push in on the door a little bit and then pull on the latch. <clears throat> Main entry door's got the same little hook. Make sure you have it secure. And then to get the step out on this one, pull the lower step out and fold it down, just like so. We'll step on inside. <clears throat> As we come in, <clears throat> I do want to mention four light switches across this row. The one at the end is the entry light and the other end is the bathroom light. In between, you've got the forward bank and the rear bank. Brian, come on in. <clears throat> All right, we've got your range right here. Now, one thing I will suggest about the range is that you go ahead and click the igniter before you turn the knob. If there's gas there, it will light immediately. Remember, the lids on these ranges are made of tempered glass, so you want to let them cool off before you shut them down. Power port here, you've got your AC and your DC. Brian, if you'll step this direction. Here on the wall, we've got the water heater control. We're going to turn it down to about 118 degrees. That's what most folks are used to coming out of the faucet at. It's on demand and propane fired. So as long as you've got propane in your bottles, all you have to do is create a demand on the faucet and it will light automatically. Unfortunately, on this trailer, there's no indication from the display that it's actually working. Just give it about 20 minutes. If you don't have hot water coming out, go and check the uh, water or the propane bottles and make sure that they're open and that there's propane in there and try it again. Over here, we've got the furnace control. This one's real simple. You're gonna turn the unit on here and then you'll simply turn the heat up. The furnace in this unit is also ducted around the water tank. So when it's cold outside, they'll help keep your water from freezing. Sea level monitor here. So you're gonna get your battery voltage. Fresh tank level is 45% full. Gray tank is 25% full and the black tank is Empty, it's actually got a little bit of water in there, but not enough to read on the gauge. Now on any of the water tanks, if you press the button once, within a few seconds it will disappear, but if you press it twice, you get a dot that will hold the value on the screen. So on this particular trailer, you can look in the rear entry door or you can even look in the window here and watch the status of your tanks as you're filling and emptying them. Onboard water pumps turned on here, on demand. So it's gonna pressure up and stop. It's not gonna come back on again until you create a demand. And then above that, you've got your solar monitoring panel. We're going to head this way into the bathroom. Flush in the toilet. There's a lever on the right hand side. Give it a partial step to fill the bowl. Full step's going to flush. Remember your chemical goes straight down into the toilet. Let's see, we've got a little clothesline here that we can stretch across and tighten down. It's good for your bathing suits, your dish towels, but not your bath towels. You want to hang your bath towels here. Manual vent fan here it gets pushed open. Little red button turns it on and off. Pulled shut. Shower head has that pause feature so you can pause the water while you're soaping up. <coughs> Remember the light switch for the bathroom is going to be outside. Over here we have the refrigerator. This refrigerator is an AC-DC refrigerator. So if you're plugged into your short service, it's running on AC. Pull that plug, it's going to automatically switch over to DC. You've got a little tab here in the corner that's helping to keep the door shut while you're towing. You can use that tab to prop the door up and when you store it so it doesn't mold or mildew on the inside. Remember this takes two to three hours to get completely cold. You've got your knob for your temperature setting here. Zero is off and seven is the coldest. If you've got it packed full of cold food, completely cold, it'll stay cold all by itself for five or six hours without an external power source. Down below we've got your main breaker and fuse box. AC on the right, DC on the left. Tank heaters here. So on the bottom of all the water tanks, you've got a little heater pad. Turning this on will help keep the water in your water tanks from freezing. This is a standard DC charge port. And then you've got two USB style ones there. And in addition to that, you have the master battery disconnect switch. So we've just turned the trailer off, plugged into the shore power. Nothing is really going to change. The only thing that's no longer occurring is we're no longer charging the house batteries. We're actually going to continue the video. We're going to turn the air conditioner on all those things running off of the shore power, bypassing the house batteries. Now to make the bed, real simple, pull the levers here, push straight down on the table. Now behind these cushions, you're going to see some Velcro strips. You want to stretch this out and secure it there. So that way this part of the mattress doesn't flop around on you. Pull it out of the way, we'll put the cushion back, and then to put it back 
into the table position. It is spring loaded. You may have to help it come up just a little bit. Secure it with those levers right there. Trade me spots, Brian. Here we have your air conditioner. Now this air conditioner has a little heat strip in it. Think about your space heater at home. That's this low heat setting. And then we will need to turn the thermostat over here to the heat. <clears throat> now it's not gonna really get super hot in here with that. This is meant for a chilly day to knock the chill off of the air. If it's real cold, you wanna make sure you're using the furnace. It's got two fan only settings, low and high. So low fan, high fan. And then we've got the cool settings. Turn the thermostat over, air conditioner comes on. Remember this air conditioner is only gonna be powered when you're plugged into your shore service. It does have a high setting for that as well. Turn that one all the way off. All right, so next we're gonna set up the bed. We'll pull the little headrests out of their spot here. These are gonna go here at the end. So you can actually use this as a bench if you want to sit there, take the little ends off here. Just like so. Under this bench here is where we're going to find the table legs and the bed legs. Longer for the table, shorter for the bed. Now, to make this into a bed, you want to make sure that you have the end extended. Pull the plug out of the floor, slip that into place, and tighten it down. Take your tabletop, set it on there, and then you've got portions of the bench that are going to fold out from either side to help you make that bed. And of course, longer table, longer legs for that tabletop. And this is the outro. <laughs> Thanks for watching our video. If you have any questions or have any recommendations on content you'd like to see, make sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. If you enjoy our content, give us a like and be sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks again from Airstream DFW.